Bless up, bless up, Bermuda. That was Governor B with Glow. And like I said, man, this is the Soul Food Mix Radio Show where we give you the absolute hottest in urban gospel slash kingdom music. It's your boy, Brother Richie. Bless up to my brother, man, my partner in ministry, my closest spiritual brother, man, my, my bona fide DJ Total Package. I miss you, bro. But I'm um, missing it. Get well soon, bro. We need you to be coming down there May 24th, Brad. You know that work you've been doing. Come on now. Come on now. Go see Dr. Bernice. Whatever you got to do, <laughs> Brad. Make it happen, Total. Hope you're enjoying the show. But, folks, as I said, we do have two distinguished gentlemen. You know, I've been knowing these brothers for quite some time yes, now. Sir. You know, I've had the privilege of um, back in my way back in the day, in the barbershop days, having them both sit in my chair. You know what I mean? Um, fellowshipping. Talking, just you know, doing what we do, and all these guys that have come to be definitely pillars in the community, um, always doing something positive, and now even taking it to a next level, um, you know, where they have this new book of uh, Double Vision Journey to Success. Very excited, but I saw the post on Facebook. I'm like, I'm like, yo, look, interview, interview, I'm gonna see my candy for the book to come out, and I'm just finally heard they've been doing book tours, book signings, and all that stuff, and First of all, I just want to say welcome, Dwayne, Dwayne Keynes, to the Soul Food Mix Radio Show for the first time. Yes, sir. It's yes, sir. definitely a privilege to have you uh, um, on the show. Man, what's going on, you guys? Hey, first greetings, of all, man. First of all, thank you, Dan Wood. But most people don't recognize Brother you Richie. Is Brother Richie. I'm, I'm <laughs> using it. Don't matter, man. Get in there. Get in there. This is Brother Richie. You've been on the front line for the voice of the people for years. And even at your barber shop on Tills Hill, there's a, you create water holes for young men to come and discuss critical issues. You always wave the flag high. You were a young man doing, you actually were before your time in terms of the services that you provided for your community, the outlet that you provided for your community. And I would just like to say that the mark of greatness is on you. Yes, sir. You've yes, always kept it honest and real with your ups and downs. Right. You've always been honest with your people, and we've taken the journey with you, and some of us have been on that same path with yeah. you. It was definitely, it's definitely been some, I mean, it's definitely been some ups and downs, yeah. man. I but, mean, and I shared on the show, you know, where. For a period of almost a decade, I had, you know, left the church and was doing my own thing. Yeah. yeah. But if you look at the story of the prodigal son, yes. the prodigal son. But, <laughs> but most, my parents have preached a so sermon about the prodigal son. You know what? Mm -hmm. He talked about the son that stayed. We oftentimes focus about the son that left. Right. But sometimes people are lost in the house, right. in yeah. the church. So yeah. your story is one of hope, and, and, and you and, represent and, hope to all of us. And not only that, you look at the story of David. Oftentimes we want to see, we want to have an experience of fighting giants, but we don't want to deal with the giants in our life. David, when he was a young man, he was a man that found himself estranged from the values that he knew. This was a man that was considered a murderer. This was a man that found himself estranged from his family, from his faith, but God had put something in his life. Sometimes we don't understand that in order to have a testimony, you have to have a test. We want to go through life experiencing joys, experience, but the value experience when we are all are alone that's when we are able to get all right out. reverend no 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 yeah, yeah, all right reverend no, 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 you are ready this, yeah, guy, yeah, this guy is a joy stealer let me somebody tell you somebody get the orphan basket yeah, 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 yeah. where but, is the deacon hey but listen no, deacon no, 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 smith no no, no re real talk yeah. sometimes it's men of color and women black people in bermuda yeah. we go through so much how you feel that you are learning you might go to church and go through experiences and because you are not going to church every week you don't feel that you have any value i don't want to go to church because i'm a hypocrite you still have to keep a song in your your heart, right. even when you're not living to everything that according to your note, there must be certain things in your life you say you're not going to do. Yeah. We can never turn our back on that which we know. Mm -hmm. If you are not living perfect, guess what? God still loves you. Yeah. If you're making mistakes, God still cares about you. You still have value. You still have things that you can make. So you might not be going to church. Every Let me ride. You might not be going to church every day, but guess what? Right. You still can make a difference in somebody's life. Yeah. You still can help somebody along the way. And guess what that does, Brother Lynn Lewis? It allows you to remember where you came from. Yeah. allows you to remember your days with the Father. And sometimes when you are out there, it's just the little things that keep you connected to your roots, yeah. keeps you connected to your faith. And guess what? The way back right. is a journey. But guess what? When you come back, we have a responsibility to tell our testimony to encourage somebody else. Yeah. And, and and you know what that that's that's where where I'm at. It's like because even then when I was doing the good time party and whatever, drinking, mm -hmm. smoking, but I mean I, can't, I still call myself brother rich. Absolutely, <laughs> but you were still brother rich. Yeah, yeah, that's just what I'm saying. You know, and, and then when I came back and rededicated my life in 2010, it was like you know what, Lord, it helped it helped me to appreciate 
uh, and understand the sure. meaning of grace, sure. the sure. meaning of restoration. Yes, sir. And I'm like, you know what? I'm determined, man, to go hard in the paint, man, because uh, Samson, yeah. Samson, Samson, on the day that he died, right. killed more Philistines than he did his entire life. He asked God to put him, he asked a little boy to put him in between the pillars, the most strongest part in the temple, so in 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 in, in, in the market today. When he pushed on those towers, he can he can find out what his life's work were. Here he was blind. His dreads were just starting to shoot uh, a, a little sprouts again. Anyway, right? Yes, but this man found out his life's purpose on the day he died. For his entire life, Samson struggled with sick, with sins, with women, with selfishness, with pride. But guess what? He was still ordained by God. Wow. And so we we see we hear about Samson. We don't realize that Samson was a man his entire life that struggled with himself. His entire life he struggled with trying to find a way. Guess what? We have to keep on doing it, no matter what, no matter how you feel, no matter how worthless you feel, right. God has a plan, a purpose for you. So even when you're in your pit, even when you're in your pit, God is going to raise up a standard against the adversary and you become a testimony for someone else. It is the work of the devil to make you feel that you are estranged from God. Never can you be estranged from God. No, nothing can, what can separate you from, oh, come on, from the love of Jesus. And that is how sometimes sometimes you're doing something right, right. and you feel that you have no value yeah. and that you you that's the work of the devil yeah. even if you are a person and guess what you're not perfect right. and you're living and doing stuff that is not according to the will of God right. God still loves you yeah. keep climbing keep pushing guess what they, the Bible says sometimes you can't scream out come you can't call out uh, you're supposed to groan and the Holy Spirit interprets groaning right. Yes, that's what God wants us to do. Keep on coming. If you can't walk, crawl. If you can't crawl, you screech. If you can't scream, you just cry out to God. Right. And He has the power to heal you, to help you, and to change our very nature. Yes. Did this, wasn't this interview to talk about a book? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. But <laughs> well, we are talking about a journey. But, 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 but as, as, as men, we have to be honest with each other. Yeah, yes, yeah, so yeah. sometimes you see, oh, yes, can you got it all. Hey, yeah. struggle daily. Yeah. Struggle daily to be fervent. Struggle yeah. daily to be faithful. Yes, me and my brother, you, oh, you guys, guess what? Me and my brother fought. When we were writing this book, we argued, yes? But guess what? We had a basis of love, a reservoir that we could depend on. Right. This book is not an ode to greatness in right. us. Right. The, the book is an ode to a great God. Right. When you sometimes, you might have a, a, a book that you want to write or a sermon that you want to preach or a song you want to compose mm -hmm. and you don't understand that th that's God's ministry that lies within you. Right. We had to stop talking, Linwood. We had to stop talking about it and write it. Wow. Wow. We would we we vowed, we vowed this year that if there's anything that God has w wants us to do, See it. we're we're going we're going to do it. About two years ago, I went to um, New Creation, right. and Apostle Don Witty, um and, and everybody knows him. Adventist, and I'm an ambassador. I went to Pastor Don Witty's Alpha was was our, was our um uh, our, our um, birthday, and I went to this church, and he prayed over me. He said that God has something in you that He wants to deliver through you, and I, He called me to the front, and I right. wasn't expecting this. And I mean, literally, He anointed me in this church service, and He, and I mean, literally, I felt God's outpouring, and I realized that Dwayne and I had a mission, not only in Bermuda, but we had to do something that was not traditional to, to try to change lives, not only in Bermuda but around the world. You know what? Um in one of my posts man, on Facebook, I was saying how sometimes, you know, we get to a point in life where we don't even want to get out of bed yes. in the morning. Yes, sir. You know? Yeah. And half of that struggle we have is that the, that the enemy of our souls, he knows our potential Absolutely. more than we do. Absolutely. And he tries to keep us so distracted Absolutely. with the issues of life, the, 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 the rat race. Yes, sir. And try to keep us distracted so that we don't find out our true potential yes. that we have in God. Yes. Because if we did, we would truly be a threat to the enemy's kingdom. And that's why you always have to have a formula. And okay. this is what the formula is. Okay, what's that? Yes. Talk to me. You have to find out what your passion is. Mm. So as a Christian, you might see your pastor up front or, or somebody in the praise team or a deacon and out and you feel that is their calling. Right. You have to find out what your passion is. What burns within you? Mm. What are you good at? Mm. Yes? If, if, if it's football playing, then guess what? You have to bring young men in the community together to play football. Mm. You might just be able to bake gingerbread, but guess what? You have to bake those cookies to a gingerbread to help somebody else. The reason